Hello. Welcome back. Business Friday with Johnny Tiger. Kitchen is occupied elsewhere. Uh, so today we are going to be doing some more kettlebell. Um, and it's going to be a bit of a doozy. Uh, because today we're going to do some kettlebell clean. I'm going to show you guys a couple of variations. Now, uh, let me preface this again by saying that kettlebell is not my thing. I, I didn't grow up doing kettlebell. Uh, it's something that I learned in the past 10 or so years. Uh, but I, it, it's not my preferred method of free weight. Uh, be that as it may, it does have all kinds of fun applications. Uh, and it, it is always good to have options. Now, before we get into that, today's date is July 28, 2023, and let's grab our kettlebell, and I'm going to show you guys the basic, the basic kettlebell clean, and we can start from there. So what is a clean? Um, a lot of people who've done fair share of free weights would know that. A lot of you probably do this quite well. But just in case you are one of the uh, real new people, the clean is when you start from the deadlift and then you end in the rack position with a kettlebell around chest shoulder height in front of you in your hand like this. So imagine if you are combining a deadlift, which is starting from the kettlebell on the floor between your feet and you bend over with keeping your back straight so you power up with your hip, okay? So you're not lifting with your back. You're driving your heels into the ground and then standing up straight from that bend over position, kettlebell between your feet, power up, and then you end in the top of a bicep curl, okay? But there is actually no bicep curl. So a lot of people get the wrong idea that when you do clean, some people do it like this, this. Okay, now uh, a clean, you need to achieve both goal in one motion. So it's not a deadlift and a bicep curl. A clean is when you push into that deadlift, you put enough force into it that your weight, your free weight, travel naturally up. That momentum have to carry it up to the top of the bicep curl. So your bicep is actually doing very little in the clean. Okay, so let's look at that again, but we, not nice and slow, right? We start from deadlift, so we bend over, bend forward. Feet are a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. So the kettlebell starts on the ground between our feet. We bend forward, keeping our back straight, sticking our butt back, Grab the kettlebell, we come up, there, that's a nice and clean, uh, clean, right? Uh, I did not engage my bicep, I just used the momentum of the up motion, and then while the kettlebell is traveling up, I turn my wrist uh, in the loop. So, uh, a lot of people, when they do kettlebell clean, a common error is to swing the kettlebell, and the what's going to happen is when you get to the top, it's going to hit you on the wrist. Okay, so a lot of people when they do this, they, yeah, they look like they start from the deadlift, boom, right at the top, the kettlebell swing back and hit them on the wrist. That is where uh, you might injure yourself. So remember, for this very basic clean there should be no swinging of the kettlebell. Or you should, at the very least, keep it to a minim minimum, right? So when you come up, this kettlebell should go straight up from the floor to up, straight up. There should be very little swinging, looping motion. So you want to cut that down on the swinging and looping, and then you will notice that it won't hit your wrist, right? So again, look at this. This is a proper way to do it. I start from deadlift and I power this straight up. And then I 
turn my wrist underneath. I change my hand position before the weight come back down. And now we end in a nice rack position, uh, hold in front of the chest, right? I mean, it's still bounced off again my wrist a little bit because I am not super good at this. But this is uh, what you should be aiming for rather than starting from a deadlift. Ooh, ooh, that hurts, right? Like if you swing out and back in like that, that's no good. Okay, so this should be going straight up and down, as straight up and down as you can, right? And again, like I said, there should be very little bicep involved. Most of the momentum come from the deadlift off the ground. And that's it. Deadlift off the ground. And that's it. Deadlift off the ground. That's it. Deadlift off the ground. That's it. Right? And there should be no bruising of the wrist. If you're bruising your wrist, you're swinging this too much. Now, I'll show you guys two variations. One we already seen before. Uh, so this one should be simple right? because you guys should be familiar with this. It's a clean with a press. So all this is, is after you do your clean, you do an overhead press. But make sure in this case, the clean and the press should be two separate motion. So a lot of people, they do like a must, like they do like a simplified, uh, easy version like this. They do a deadlift, hui, and an up with the momentum. I mean, there's nothing is in, in, intrinsically wrong with it, but you are cheating yourself of the whole purpose of doing a press. Because when you use the momentum to go up like that, you're not really engaging your shoulder muscle. So a proper way to do this should be you start from the deadlift position, and then you clean. Press, down, down, clean, press, down, down. So I stop when you get to my chest and I go up and come back down to my chest, go back to the floor. Chest, up, down, down, chest, up, down, down, chest, up, down, down. Down, just like that. Okay, so there should be a pause uh, when you get to your chest, and then you press upward with that. Now the second variation. This one is difficult. Okay, I'm not going to lie. If you are not confident, uh, start with a very light kettlebell for this one because this one, if you mess up, you will hurt yourself. Right. Uh, so start light and then work your way up to it. This one called the bottom up clean. In this case, when you clean, you're going to let the kettlebell swing. And once it gets to upside down, then you clinch your muscle to hold it upside down position and hold it there for five seconds before repeating the movement. Okay, what am I talking about? So when I clean, Normally, I stop here, right, at my chest in the rack position. The kettlebell is still the right way up. In this case, with the bottom up clean, I'm going to let it swing upside down. And hold. One, two, three, four, five. Back down. Clean. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. Down, clean, swing, hold. So as you can see, I'm holding onto the handle while this is upside down. The kettlebell is upside down in my hand. The key to this, eh, a lot of people think it's on a strong wrist. No, this is not. I mean, you, you, you need to have some wrist strength. That's for sure. But it's more about timing. It's more about the moment you feel this at the right time when it's upside down you clench your fist engage your muscle so it doesn't flop over doesn't flop over you got to stop it while it is upside down like this right keep your elbow nice and tight to your rib cage keep your core nice and tight 
don't lose control of that because otherwise it's going to smack you, right? Again, swing, upside down, and see what happens there? When I lose control of that, it's going to flop over like that, right? Okay, that's what I want to show you guys, right? My left arm is a bit weak still after my injury. So with this one, the left arm is not getting the right coordination, right? So with the right arm, properly this time, swing, one, two, three, four, five. Go back down, swing, one, two, three, four, five. Just like that, right? So you guys get to see the right way and the wrong way. So like I said, this one, the upside down, the bottom out, clean. It's a little bit more difficult and can be a bit dangerous if you lose control of it. So be patient and be careful. Thank you for checking out today's episode. We'll be back again tomorrow for some more Survival Saturday. For now, have a good night.